Hello everyone. We are discussing introduction to kinematics and mechanisms. In previous lecture we have seen the mechanism, machine, structure. We have seen the difference between this and definitions of all these terms. We have also seen what is analysis and synthesis of mechanisms. Now in this lecture we will discuss about the types of links, types of constraint motions and types of kinematic pairs. Let us define a link. <clears throat> a kinematic link is a member or group of members of a mechanism connecting other members and having motion relative to them. What I said, a kinematic link is a member or group of members of a mechanism connecting other members and having motion relative to them. So, first of all, take an example of member of a mechanism which is connecting other members and which is having motion relative to other members. So, in this reciprocating engine mechanism, the slider is connected to connecting rod, connecting rod is connected to crank. All these three links are individual links. And all these links are having relative motion with respect to each other. So, these are the members of a mechanism connecting other members and having motion relative to them. So, these are the examples of kinematic link. Now, what are the group of members? Group of members are the members connected in such a way that they do not have a relative motion among themselves. But as a group, they are connected to other members or other group of members and they have relative motion with other groups or connected groups of members. Example, connecting rod plus small end bearing plus big end bearing are rigidly fixed to each other. Means this connecting rod and small end bearing and big end bearing move along with each other with the same speed and in the same direction. They do not have relative motion with respect to each other. So they constitute a single link. But all of these three members are connected as a single rigid link with the piston and the crank. So they are moving as a single link with respect to piston and with respect to the crank. So they form a kinematic link, a single kinematic link. This group of members form a single kinematic link. Okay, a single kinematic link. Next example is crank plus crankshaft plus flywheel. Now crank, crankshaft and flywheel are rigidly fixed to each other. That means crank and crankshaft and flywheel do not move relative to each other. But they will move with the same speed in the same direction along with each other. So all of these three members which are rigidly connected to each other forms a single link. Okay, They form a single link. But they are connected to the connecting rod. So all of these three members execute some type of relative motion with respect to the connecting rod. Okay. So these three links, uh, three members which are connected rigidly to each other forms a single link. Okay. So a kinematic link is a member or group of members of a mechanism connecting other members and having motion relative to them. This is the definition of kinematic link. It will be better if you make a list of other examples of members and group of members forming a kinematic links. Now take these examples. Rack and pinion. There are two links, rack and pinion, belt and pulley, pulley is link number one, belt is link number two, 
camshaft is link number one and all these cams in green color form link number two because there is no relative motion between link number one and two camshaft link number one and these cams link number two are rigidly fixed to each other so they will move with same speed in the same direction together as a single link so cam and camshaft forms a single link okay. so this is also link number one not link number two because there is no relative motion between cam and camshaft now in this example let us count the number of links this camshaft is rotating with this cam the, or this cam is rigidly fixed to the camshaft so both these members form a single link say so link number one this is having relative motion with this roller so this roller forms a second link this roller is ro uh, rotating with respect to this follower so this follower forms link number three and this link number three follows the reciprocating inside this fixed guide so the this fixed guide forms a link number four so in total there are four number of links in this mechanism for this this cam and camshaft forms a single link link number one these followers are link number two next let us classify the links links are classified as rigid link flexible link or fluid link rigid links are those which are assumed to be non deformable okay examples are connecting rod piston crank etc okay. so connecting rod is an example of rigid link rigid links do not deform at all flexible links deform partly while transmitting the motion in such a manner that their deformation doesn't affect the transmission of motion so belt rope chain drives and springs will deform partly while transmitting the motion but the deformation is such that it doesn't affect the motion transmission between the links so these are called as flexible links now fluid compressed fluid under pressure can also transmit the motion as in the case of hydraulic brakes hydraulic jacks etc you can transmit the motion from input to the output through the compressed fluid under pressure so the fluid links so there are three types of links rigid link flexible link and fluid link rigid link do not trans uh, deform at all flexible link deform partly while transmitting the motion and fluid links transmit the motion using a compressed fluid under pressure now links can also be classified in other way like the binary link ternary quaternary and so on okay this doesn't end here what are binary links links which can be connected at two different points in a mechanism now this link has two holes which can be connected to two pins in a mechanism so this is a binary link now this link can be connected at three different points in a mechanism one two and three so this forms a ternary link now this link can be connected at four different points in a mechanism one two three and four so it is called as a quaternary link you can represent binary link like this ternary like this and quaternary like this okay connecting rod is an example of binary link which is represented this way this is an example of ternary link which can be represented in configuration diagram like this okay look at this connecting rod is connected to the piston and to the crankshaft so at two different points in a mechanism so it forms a binary link now let us try an example count how many number of links are there let us count one this is 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स देर आर सिक्स नंबर ऑफ लिंक्स फोर आर बाइनरी लिंक्स दिस 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 एंड दिस आर बाइनरी लिंक्स विच आर कनेक्टेड एट टू डिफरेंट पॉइंट एंड दिस लिंक विच आर शोन इन शेडेड कलर आर टर्नर लिंक्स बिकॉज दे आर कनेक्टेड एट थ्री डिफरेंट पॉइंट इन मेकेजम Take this example. Count the number of links: one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six links, and all the six links are binary links because each of the link is connected at only two different points in a mechanism. See, link number one is connected here, here, at two points, so it is a binary link. Link number two is connected here and here, so at two different points, binary link. Three is connected at two different points, so it is a binary link. Four is connected at two different points, so it is also a binary link. Similarly, five and six are also binary links. So six links and all of them are binary links. Now let us revisit the definition of mechanism. Mechanism is an assemblage of resistant bodies assembled in such a way that motion of one causes constraint and predictable motion of others. so we can extract the characteristics of kinematic link from this definition a kinematic link must be a resistant body always and it should have a constraint and predictable motion relative to the connected links So in the last lecture we have seen what is the constraint and predictable motion. Constraint motion means motion which can take place in one definite direction, and predictable motion means motion which can be predicted exactly with respect to the input motion. So now let us study the types of the constraint motion between a pair of link. First one is completely constraint motion. Look at these two examples. This rectangular bar sliding in a rectangular hole. So this is link number one, rectangular bar sliding in link number two, which is a rectangular hole. So in this link number one, that is rectangular bar, can only slide inside the link number two. So the motion takes place only in horizontal direction. Whatever be 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 the direction of the applied force, the bar will always slide inside this link. so the motion takes place in one definite direction so this or such type of motions are called as completely constraint motion look at the another example link number 1 shaft with collars at both the ends rotating inside the bearing link number 2 this shaft can only rotate inside this bearing regardless of the direction of the force applied this is a turning pair the motion is purely turning in one direction only such type of motion is an example of completely constrained motion in completely constrained motion now here is the shaft link number 1 rotating inside the bearing link number 2 now link number 1 that is shaft can rotate as well as slide inside this bearing it can rotate as well as slide inside this bearing okay and you cannot exactly predict the amount of rotation related to the amount of translation so motion takes place in two directions and it is unpredictable such types of motion are called as incompletely constrained motion so the motion which takes place in more than one direction is called as incompletely constrained motion now successfully constrained motion we'll take an example of foot step bearing when this the shaft is supported using the bearing at its end now if the speed of the shaft is sufficiently high it can jump out of this bearing so the motion will take place in 
two directions it can rotate as well as it can slide in vertical direction so primary the motion is incompletely constant motion but if we can make this incompletely constant motion or we can convert this incompletely constant motion into the completely constant motion by increasing the vertical load or the axial load on the shaft such that at the operating speeds the shaft will not jump out of the bearing after doing this the motion can take place in only one direction that is rotation about the vertical axis of the shaft now we have made the incompletely constant motion the constraint one by using some external means such a types of motions are called as successfully constrained motion now let us discuss about the kinematic pairs kinematic pair is formed by two kinematic links connected together in such a manner that relative motion between the two links is completely or successfully constrained so here is an example of kinematic pair formed by one sliding bo uh, block sliding inside this rectangular slot so the motion is completely constrained so link number 1 and link number 2 forms a kinematic pair there is the fixed link in the form of pivot link number 2 bell crank lever is pivoted with link number 1 the motion can takes uh, take place in one direction that is rotation of bell crank lever so these two links form say kinematic pair now when uh, a kinematic pair is formed using two links we can classify the kinematic pair based on this three points first one is the type of relative motion that exists between the two connected links the nature of contact between the two connected links and the type of mechanical constraint now based on the type of relative motion between the two links which are connected at a pair we can classify the kinematic pair as sliding pair turning pair rolling pair screw pair spherical cylindrical and planar pairs now depending upon the nature of contacting surfaces between the two links at a particular connection we can define the kinematic pairs as lower pairs and higher pairs and based on the type of mechanical constraint that how the two links are held in pair we can classify the kinematic pairs as self closed pairs or forced closed pairs so let us see one by one first of all let us uh, see the classification based on the nature of contact between the pairing surfaces based on this we can classify the kinematic pairs as lower pairs and higher pairs when the nature of contact between the two links is surface contact or area contact we will call the pair as a lower pair while when the nature of contact is point contact or line contact we will call the pair as higher pairs in case of lower pairs the contacting surfaces are similar to each other and in case of higher pairs the nature of contacting surfaces is dissimilar so if we insert a shaft in the hole so this is the shaft and this is hole you can see the nature of contacting surfaces is similar this forms a surface contact so this is a lower pair now if we hold two cylindrical surfaces over each other like this it forms a line contact 
So this is surface one, this is surface two. And you can see the nature of contacting surfaces are dissimilar. One is convex and one is concave at the point of contact. So nature of contacting surface is similar for lower pairs and it is dissimilar for higher pairs. Lower pairs will have pure sliding or turning motion while the higher pairs have partly sliding and turning motion because of point or line contact. Examples of lower pairs are all the sliding pairs, turning pairs and screw pairs forms lower pairs. Another example of lower pair is of universal joint or hoax joint. Examples of higher pairs are cam and follower, gear drive, field rolling on a surface. Cam and follower have point contact or line contact. Gear drive have point or line contact. Wheel rolling on a surface has a line contact. So all of these forms higher pair. All the sliding pairs and turning pairs and screw pairs have surface contact as well as universal joint have surface contact. So they constitute lower pair. These are the examples of lower pairs. Sliding pair, surface contact, turning pair, surface contact. All the pairs in slider crank mechanism are lower pairs. Pair between piston and connecting rod is a turning pair. Pair between connecting rod and crank is a turning pair. So these are the lower pairs. Example of higher pairs, cam and follower, point contact or line contact, uh, gear pair, line contact or point contact, ball and roller bearings, rolling pair, higher pairs, belt and pulley drive is an example of higher pair because of point contact due to surface roughnesses to maintain or to avoid the slip they have surface roughness between the contacting surfaces which results in point contact so they are classified under higher pairs now second according to the type of closure or mechanical constraint how the links are held together mechanically when both the links of a mechanism are held together by their geometry itself. Such types of pairs are called as closed pairs. Here in case of sliding pair link number 1 and link number 2 are held together mechanically by itself. Due to their geometry they are held together. So this forms a closed pair or self-closed pair. All the lower pairs are examples of self-closed pairs or the lower pairs turning pairs sliding pairs screw pairs are examples of self-closed pairs because both the elements in a pair are held together mechanically by themselves they are in contact with each other because of their geometrical construction and some of the higher pairs also forms the closed pairs or self-closed pairs look at these examples of example of cam and follower drive here the contact between cam and follower can be break only by destruction of these two elements. So they form a self-closed pair. And in case of unclosed or forced closed pairs, two elements in a pair are held together using some external means. Usually the external means is the spring force or the gravity force. In this example, if the operating speed of link number 2 that is cam is sufficiently high, the follower may jump in vertical direction and lose contact. But by using a spring, we can provide some amount of preload on the follower. That preload can maintain the contact between these two surfaces at the operating speed. The second way is to increase the inertia of the follower such that the gravity force is sufficiently high to maintain the contact between the two surfaces at the operating speeds of cam. So when the contact is maintained between two elements in a pair using a spring or gravity force, you will classify that pair as 
forced close pair next based on the type of relative motion between the pairing elements first one is sliding pair in case of sliding pair the two elements in contact with each other will execute pure sliding motion relative to each other tensile stock of a lathe pure sliding motion piston and cylinder pure sliding motion rectangular bar sliding inside the rectangular slot also execute pure sliding motion so motion is pure sliding so all this forms a sliding pair sliding pair has one degree of freedom because the motion takes place in only one direction it is sometimes called as prismatic joint indicated by letter p sliding pair comes under the lower pair because of surface contact as well as it is a self closed pair now turning pair when the motion between two links is purely turning it forms a turning pair degree of freedom of turning pair is also one because of pure turning motion in one direction turning pair is also called as revolute pair it is a lower pair because of surface contact turning pairs are indicated by letter r for revolute pair turning pairs are also self closed pairs next is the rolling pair when one element rolls with respect to the another element it forms a rolling pair example is ball and roller bearing or a roller rolling on a flat surface rolling pair have one or two degrees of freedom one for rolling and two if slip is also present along with the rolling motion rolling pair forms a higher pair next is screw pair when one element turn inside the another element through the screw threads it forms a screw pair screw pair is also called as helical pair it is an example of lower pair because of surface contact indicated by letter h helical pair has one degree of freedom because this screw can turn as well as it can go inside this link number 2 but both these motions are dependent on each other we can predict the amount of s based on the amount of angle theta so only one variable either theta or s is sufficient to define the position of this screw inside the nut so degree of freedom of screw pair is 1 number of independent parameters required to define the position of one link inside the another so only theta or s is sufficient so degree of freedom of screw pair is 1 next is cylindrical pair a shaft rotating inside the bearing forms a cylindrical pair it has two degrees of freedom because a shaft can slide as well as rotate inside the bearing and both these motions rotation and translation are independent of each other so we count them as separate degree of freedom so cylindrical pair have two degrees of freedom cylindrical pair is an example of lower pair because of surface contact these pairs are indicated by letter c next is spherical pair ball and socket joint is an example of spherical pair ideally spherical pairs are classified under lower pairs indicated by letter s mirror attachment of a vehicle is also an example of spherical pair spherical pair has 3 degrees of freedom rotation about x y and z last one is the planar pair which is also called as flat pair planar pair is also an example of lower pair because of surface contact a rectangular block placed on a flat surface forms a planar pair it has 3 degrees of freedom because it can translate in two directions x and y as well as it can rotate about the vertical direction of z axis it is indicated by letter f thank you